Last week, I had an amazing response to the video I did on using fonts as art styles within Midjourney. This week, I'm going to try something even harder. I'm going to use the most boring graphical style, and that's data visualization um, for an art style. All right, let's see what kind of funky stuff we can make. The most boring art style I could think of was an Excel document. I mean, it's not designed, but it has a very specific look to it. God, I've worked with many uh, Hollywood producers that are just addicted to this program. And um, we all know what it looks like. I'll pull up a thing and, you know, it's it's spreadsheet and it's it's color coded and math and it's deep. But anyway, let's get into it. I used excel as my my art style and this is what i can i made it a lot more exciting i'm telling you anyway here's a woman in the style of excel that's pretty cool it's very tile like mosaic but very cool beautiful and who knows you know what a what a cool design element never know how you could use that and that oh i gotta click on my thing and then this week I added man to our to our 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 elements our subjects uh, because I wanted to see what masculine does to a art style. Uh, does it drastically change it? I mean, this is very similar, but um, you know, in different cases, I'm always trying to figure out like where the boundaries are and how much impact our art styles are having on these very simple prompts. Of course. When you use them, you'll probably use them on much more expressive and extensive prompts, but I'm trying to get into the core of what the art style is doing to these simple prompts. So here's a man in the style of an Excel document, a burger. That looks cool. God, I, I wish some of the producers I worked for had Excel documents that look this exciting. An octopus. This one's a little funky, more, uh, you know, kind of gets into that just squared off mosaic look, then I, I guess the background is really calling in the Excel boringness, but a house. This is really cool because, you know, with Excel, you're tracing lines and seeing how far, you know, see how they extend and where they add up and everything. I think this house looks pretty cool. It, it has a vibe of almost an infographic too. Very cool. Never know when you could apply this, what kind of uh, client you have that might need something that looks a little infotainment type stuff. And then the lines in the back also make buildings. See, it's pretty cool how it's integrated. A tree. Look at that. I mean, that is, maybe we should be just, forget AI. Let's just go to Excel and make Make art there. This is pretty cool, though, because this overlays a more realistic rendering of a tree over the grid pattern. And, uh, you know, you just never know what kind of stuff you're going to get. I like it. It's good. You know, anytime we can we can extract and play with some type of graphical representation, like, let's do it. Let's let's see where it takes us. All right. That's tree. And that is in the Excel art style. I really enjoy this next one. Um, and I guess it's because I am, I guess you would consider me an outdoorsy guy, an outdoorsy, outdoorsy person. You know, our family likes to get out there, hike, mountain bike, snowboard, do it all. So this next style is topographical map. Um, topographical maps, I'll give you an example, is a map that tells you how uh, the elevation it, it represents the elevation on a flat piece of paper. Um, the tighter the curves are, tighter the lines are together, the steeper the elevation. Um, and then it'll have elevation markers that, you know, at, at the top where it's at, at the bottom, and you can kind of tell how closely the lines are that it represents a, a steeper grade. So this, uh, how cool is this stuff? This is, I love this. I really love it. This is a woman in the style of topographical map. And, oh, I keep forgetting to click. And here's a man in the style of a topographical map. How cool is that? Come on. That is just wild, you know? Uh, and it gives it a 3D element. It not, it, it's not just the flat textural laying, laying the lines over a flat image. It, it gives a, a depth to it and a, you know, you can have a topographical maps that are 
in 3D. So this is a man as a topographical map. A burger. Now, this is taking, you know, there's a range of coloring that also can be on topographical maps where the deepest blues are the deepest part of the oceans. And, you know, the, the hotter uh, reds and stuff would be the highest elevation. So this is applying that to a cheeseburger. Pretty cool. You know, it's, it's a weird interpretation of it, but all the elements are there. You got the topographical map and the curves of, of this cheesiness on here. Um, also are a good uh, representation of topographical elements in its own way, you know, not a direct interpretation. And then, of course, it's on a bun. So it's a cheeseburger, an octopus. Look at that. So this, once again, um, took the lines in a different way and applied them in almost a silly putty extraction type way, but then used the coloring that you would find in a topographical map. I mean, that's a beautiful image. That's beautiful elements. People would be shocked and surprised when you're not in a bad way, in a great way, coming up with this, this creative idea, this creative representation of an octopus house. That is just awesome. I love that. It's a little tiny house on top of our topographical map. I mean, that is just straightforward and beautiful and it's all monotone so i can imagine this area in the front is like a deep pond that this guy keeps stocked with trout i may be i may be applying my own dreams and wishes to a house i would want but anyway very cool i love that just awesome a tree same thing oh my gosh this is a topographical model of a tree coming out of a topographical map beautiful a motorcycle. So this is cool because it kind of drew out the motorcycle, but then it embossed it on a 3D it, topical map behind it. And, and it feels very embossed. And the rendering of it in this, in this gray, uh, shades of gray, it, 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 or grayscale, it gives it a feeling of a ambient occlusion map, something you would apply in 3D um, or a a displacement map. Very cool. And that's it. That's topographical maps used as an art style. This one's a pretty cool one. This is using a heat map as an art style. So heat maps are, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of the uh, predator view. I may have uh, dated us. I wish I could do a predator impersonation. Maybe I can find a sound effect for it and put it in here. Anyway, uh, we're using a heat map as an art form. So this is a woman in the style of a heat map and you know it's supposed to the the brightness or the brightness and warmth of the colors determine where the hottest part of the image is and the cools and the blues are the the coldest um so it's a representation of heat you know visual representation of heat i told you this stuff's not exciting but uh here's a woman just how we would think if predator stuck snuck into her bedroom he that's what he'd see here's a man uh, this is, uh, I kept this one in cause it, it's kind of rough. It's kind of, you know, 1980s type heat map where you got very low resolution. I just thought it was interesting that you can get a very different, geez, I got the hiccups and burps, uh, that you can get a very different look. Um, even though you're putting the same prompt and maybe that's the masculine feminine side of, of, uh, the implications of, of using that as a subject. A burger as a heat map. And now look, this isn't really telling us where the heat of the burger is, but it's using the colors and the pixelization that you would imagine through a, um, you know, I think they're called FLIR cameras or the most popular brand of, of heat sensing cameras. And uh, there's other things that can create, gen uh, generate heat maps. You can also have, there are programs that will you can put a 3D model into it and say, we're applying a pressure here and a pressure here, and it'll give you a heat map to determine where it will bend or break. Um, another, another visualization tool. This is a burger, you know, pretty cool. An octopus, you know, this took the color palette from the, the heat map and applied it to a very realistic uh, octopus. So I think that's pretty cool. You know, it doesn't always have to be literal. Like we're looking through a... Uh, heat sensitive camera it, it, it can do things like this and just grab the color palette of those cameras and the, that imagery a house this is very straightforward this is what i would expect you know sometimes people use these FLIR cameras um and these heat cameras to go and see where their yeah where their house is leaking energy and uh you know leaking heat or air conditioning and uh you know 
that way you can say, oh, I got to button that up because, uh, you know, I'm burning a lot of fuel keeping this house warm. And, you know, that big cold area must be a leak over there. Pretty good application of it. A tree. Now, I don't think this is a literal representation of anything, but, you know, it has a very cool gradient from yellow to red and, you know, very graphical, very uh, juvenile, I would say almost. And then you put this grid over it and uh, pretty cool. It's, uh, it's interesting. You know, you never know how you could use an asset like that or what kind of clients you have that you need to apply these things to. And motorcycle, if there was a guy on a scooter and Predator was chasing him down, that's what he'd look like. Except this guy is part scooter, so he might be like Decepticon. You know, maybe Optimus Prime is after him using his heat thing and, hey, this guy didn't fully transform. He's still got a body sticking out of his seat. Anyway, that's using a heat map as an art form. That's all I can say. Hey, once again, thank you for watching my video and, you know, taking a dive into how using data visualization as art forms, which are just polar opposites. You know, this stuff isn't supposed to be an art. <laughs> but we can apply it in mid-journey and mid-journey does a fantastic job of combining you know two polar opposites into really cool art and ideas and you know gets gets the gears going of course you guys would use this on much more complex prompts and i would love to see that stuff put it in the uh discord uh as for me if you could like this video that would be great uh subscribe to the channel you guys are doing great i'm i'm blown away by the response by, by the feedback and you guys you know really you know showing up every week to see me i'm i love it um so like subscribe comment below let's talk about things i love it if you like it if you don't like it if you think ai art is a joke comment below i'll have a conversation with you i'm not afraid if you love ai art I'm there too. I'm with you. Anyway, all right. Until next week, see ya.